Today we need to get into people getting really upset over Jungkook's Golden album and what happened with that. I want to get into people saying that the love songs on Golden are about a man and then I want to get into a boyfriend pictures trending. So hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Hater or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Grab your dumpling, it's his spilling mug merch and let's go. Boyfriend pictures are the root of K-pop and K-pop culture, not literally, but they're a huge part of it and a lot of how the audience connects to their favorite idol. These are not pictures that are specific as you would imagine to just boy groups, but these pictures also exist for women in girl groups. I just don't know if they're also still called boyfriend pictures or not, but what are these pictures for those who don't know? Boyfriend pictures are the pictures idols take that make it seem like you're on a date with them. So photos where you might see the back of an idol walking on the beach and it's just supposed to look like how it would look like if you're walking behind your boyfriend, except the idol is your boyfriend. And then other pictures that look like a girlfriend is snapping a picture of their boyfriend sitting across from them on a date at a restaurant. And so these photos also could also be called boyfriend pics for girl groups as to make it appear like the male audience that loves the female idol is the boyfriend of the female idol. So recently some photos of Jimin actually started to trend and people were going absolutely nuts over this. If you're not aware, Jimin is currently in Japan. He took a trip and it was heavily documented when he arrived at the airport. And I believe he was with Jungkook. That is completely not relevant to this story, but if I leave out that fact, those who ship Jimin and Jungkook are going to say I am purposely ignoring Jungkook. And if I say it, I'm going to get hate for pushing the ship. So I'm just going to say and then add my disclaimer. We can assume that Jungkook took some of these photos simply so Jimin could have something to post. Jimin posted a bunch of photos of what appeared like him at Japanese restaurants. We also have photos of him outside Dior and those are very cute photos. People were saying the photos give the vibe of how you would take photos if Jimin was your boyfriend. And these photos make it appear like you are going on a date with Jimin or whichever idol takes these photos. I love that these photos make us feel closer but it's still important to recognize what is virtual and what is real. And I say this because it's becoming more and more prevalent that people are so drawn into this virtual fantasy that they're showing up at Tang's apartment elevator with marriage papers. And even an insane person doesn't propose or give marriage documents to someone they don't at least think they know. And a lot of it is due to the culture that exists where there's literally people who say that every time the idol live streams, they're talking directly to the one fan. And I've seen people claim this over and over again when other people say that BTS never responds to fans one-on-one -on, -one on Twitter or whatever. And then people use this argument to say that BTS replies one-on-one -on -one during live streams. They don't always do that because they don't always answer questions. And Jungkook used to do it on Instagram, so he has done it, but it's not during the live streams. It's during social media Q&As or fan meets. BTS members during live streams should be considered more so a show or a live event rather than a one-on-one -on -one moment with the member. And I used to think it was fine to let people think that the live streams were just for them. However, we are seeing more and more danger come from that as the individual mentally unstable people literally think the idol logs on to the live stream and it's a FaceTime. And then the same people or fans are extremely quick to protest or send hate to the members when the members don't meet their made up standard in their head. The sooner we realize that the people we see on screen are not necessarily people that we all know, stalking and even problematic cancel culture are things we will see less of. Cancel culture is necessary when it's someone doing something very problematic and disgusting. And by those things, I mean like touching kids or hurting someone else. In reality, a lot of cancel culture nowadays is when the public figure has a set group of maybe 10 people that really hate the public figure for no reason. And every single day, that group of 10 people try various made up things, accusing the idol of doing bad things. They'll edit fake things, they'll make up things, and they'll see what goes viral and what is believable. And the reason they're able to do this is because they genuinely believe they have access to that public figure. They believe that they have the power to get the idol's attention. And so they do whatever they can to get that idol's attention, which is what they want. It's the same thing where Sasings will try their hardest to stab or injure an idol in hopes of getting noticed. So Jungkook has recently been canceled by his own little hate group and every single public person that is involved in K-pop has their own little hate group against them. And so every single idol has someone trying to start a hate train on that idol. So when this whole war broke out over Israel and Palestine, it made it very easy to run a hate train on Jungkook.
Jungkook because these people would look at who Jungkook has worked with on the Golden Album and then say that Jungkook supports what those producers support. And there would be an issue on whatever side Jungkook would pick. So even if the producers were not on the side that they're currently on and on the opposing side, Jungkook would still be hated for working with them. So it's best if he just doesn't get involved. It also doesn't really involve him and he hasn't been involved. People who are very against the belief of the people who have worked on Jungkook's album have opted to not only not stream the album but destroy it or be completely disappointed in the fact that Jungkook has chosen to work with these people. All of which the internet and fans have also called fake activism because those same people, it's not like you go on their page every message and post is about Israel and Palestine situation. They don't actually care. They only care when it's convenient to cancel someone. And this is why I will preach this until I die. People should not just be jumping on hate trains for this exact reason. You don't know where it came from. The fact that hate could be coming from someone who has spent weeks and months just trying to cancel someone is so unsatisfying when those low life people actually win and the public figure gets canceled. Bottom line is celebrities and idols like Jungkook are going to have the best people work on their album. And it's very tough when deciding who to work with. I'm not making an excuse for anyone. I do believe bad people should not have the privilege of working a not only high paying job, but a job that is around such amazing celebrities. It is still, however, extremely hard to find talent in the industry. And people have to draw a line somewhere. And that's where it gets gray, right? Do you only not work with people who have committed SA or even just people who have been rumored to be? Or do you draw the line on their political beliefs? If I am a part of the LGBT community, am I not allowed to work with someone who is anti-LGBT. So these are the questions that are supposed to be personal questions that the idols might ask themselves. And if their decision does bother you, then don't listen, don't stream. This is where art and politics get very involved and they shouldn't be. However, if your viewpoints don't align and you're very upset that your imaginary husband doesn't agree with you, then just don't be a fan of that idol anymore. However, I think politics and music should be somewhat separate even though I agree it's hard to do that. The album Golden was allegedly believed to have some songs that were about a man and a male relationship. Who is that man and what songs are we talking about? Well, people think it's about Jimin and Jungkook dating. The rumors of the two dating have been heightened as people believe that Tang is dating Jenny, so Tang is out of the running to be a romantic partner. But what if they're poly? You have no idea. And I will continue to throw stones at their fantasy because I just think it's hilarious when they get so mad. Fans were creating a playlist with not a specific one song, but songs on the Golden Album with Jimin songs from his album. And then saying that the playlist is Jikook coded and they're singing about each other. They could be singing about each other, right? They spend a lot of time together and if they haven't ever had a romantic partner, the love and care that they have for each other can be used in writing the songs about a romantic partner, like wondering where they are or wanting to spend time with them. You can exaggerate these emotions and make them into a love song. That doesn't necessarily mean the song is about each other, just inspired by each other. And a lot of songwriters do this without it ever being about anyone. However, Jungkook has actually been very open about how the songs are actually not written by him and he had little to no involvement in that. So the idea that a song having a specific meaning is something coming from him would just be completely untrue. However, I do like the idea that the songs on the album could be about people from all different orientations and spectrums. I don't think that they do fit, but if you are someone within the spectrum and you can relate to the album, that's actually really beautiful and I hope you do. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check on Patreon for more videos, link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you, bye.